Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, community of the North Penn School District, thanks so much for joining us again on Educating with Ease with Superintendent Todd Bauer and my co- Wait, you know what? Before I bring in the co-host, we're going to turn that music back up again. Enjoy it a little bit. And then we're going to almost like entry music into a sporting event. I'm going to introduce Mr. Bob Gilmer, co-host of Educating with Ease. Here he comes. There's Bob. All right. Hey, Bob. Okay, you can turn that music down again. All right, all right. I do like that music. That's nice. Again, it's not an official contest, but if somebody has an idea for a theme, they're they're mixing on GarageBand, they could shoot something our way. Maybe we sample some stuff here in the future. We could do that. We uh, could like always an opportunity. We could take a poll, but keep in mind copyright issues. So someone someone did comment last time, like, how about the Rocky theme? I'm not so sure that's publicly yeah, accessible. We don't own that one. It's a good theme. It's solid, but uh, it's not our theme. <laughs> yeah. So uh, good afternoon, evening, morning, folks. Actually, I'd love to hear when you listen to the podcast. That could tell us the best time to release it. But we want to get on a regular cadence here, have it come out maybe every two weeks for now. Uh, just get it to be a part of your week. So please subscribe, whether you're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, whether you're watching on YouTube, you can follow and like North Penn Television, but please uh, subscribe. That helps us get some metrics on what's going on here, and hopefully you're enjoying. This is just episode two. So, Bob, how you doing? I'm good. It, it's it's interesting. We we launched the pod, podcast last week. We had it on WMPV Saturday. So I, I'm curious if people let us know if uh, they listened on WMPV at noon as well. Uh, so it's a radio show there. And, uh, and I don't know if you saw it, if you're on Spotify, you can actually ask us questions in the portal there. So you can throw questions right in there on the Spotify um, page where we have the, the podcast posted. So you can- I did not know this. Yeah, see, it's magic, magic things. And I did hear, give a shout out to Kenny Boy. Kenny is a listener when he's driving into work every day. Yeah, Kenny. That's the Kenny music I just added. Oh, I like the Kenny music. Okay. So yeah, he was just talking to me the other day about how he really enjoyed the conversation and um, is excited to, to hear more from you, Dr. Bauer, and, and learn more about our staff and students here at North Penn. So thank you, Kenny, for listening. I appreciate all listeners. Maybe next episode, we can bring some metrics to the table about how many listens we had, uh, any feedback we're receiving, but this is a work in progress. Uh, we're working together to try to get things moving here on Educating with Ease. And just a reminder, the four E's are ensure belonging, elevate learning, engage community, and exceed expectations. Hence, yeah. ease <laughs> with Educating with Ease. All right. So last episode, episode one of hopefully many, we had the new principal of Inglewood Elementary, Mrs. Stephanie Hannon. Some really positive responses from that. I'm going to give a shout out. This is unconventional. I'm going to give a shout out to Mr. Patchell. Uh, Mr. Patchell is well known in the North Penn community for his engagement, we will call it, with the North Penn School District. And uh, he said she seems like a wonderful person and what a great hire by the district. So uh, Mrs. Hannon was appreciated and that was a fun episode. Yeah. And that, you know what? And even to warm my heart, I thank you, Bill, for that. So, you know, reminding like we have really good people here. And when you get to have these in-depth conversations uh, here on Elevating with Ease or otherwise of, of really realizing the quality of our people and what kind and, and great people we have here at North Penn. So that was really nice to see. Yeah, Speaking uh, of nice people, are we are we ready? I think we're ready. I okay, think we're ready. This. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slide out. Ready? Music's kicking in for our guest. Here we go. Got it. All right, I'm sliding out. All right, here comes my radio voice. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you the new principal at Walton Farm Elementary School. Uh, again, our second of two new principals at the elementary level, Mr. Dan Minna. Dan Minna, welcome to the show. Hi, how's it going? It's going great, Dan. Thanks for joining us so much. Um, one of the objectives here is to kind of make our large community a bit smaller and bring people together and let the community get to know some of the people who work here. And we believe you're only as great as the people who are here, which includes our students, our staff, and the larger community. And we're pleased to have you as part of this community, Dan. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Awesome. Yeah, I'm happy to join you today. Uh, so yes, my name is Dan Minna, proud principal here at Walton Farm Elementary School. Uh, new to North Penn, new to the area. I've uh, spent my entire career up to this point being an educator in Philadelphia. Uh, so I was a teacher in Philadelphia. I eventually was uh, an assistant principal and then a principal in Philadelphia. 
um, working in the public school there and a, a charter organization there. Um, and really, it was only until this summer that my family and I moved up towards this area and, you know, had the awesome opportunity to, to take over as principal at Walton Farm. Um, but just honestly, I've loved the transition up to this point and have been really impressed with, you know, the commitment that North Penn has and that Walton Farm has to students and community. So I'm happy to be here. Great. Well, we're happy to have you, of course. And you gave a brief overview of your professional experience. We'll get to the personal in a moment, which quite frankly is more fun, right? People want to get to know you and talk about your family and your hobbies and your interests. But I also recall from your interview, uh, I was in the final round of, I guess, three, four, if you include the paper screening. Uh, I was in your final round interview and you mentioned uh, teaching, I believe, in South Africa. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? How did that come to be? And tell us about that experience. Yeah, so that was probably one of the best experiences of my life. So um, after being a principal or being a teacher in Philadelphia for a couple of years, I uh, started realizing and reflecting on just like where life was going and how, you know, quick life happens and recognizing that if I'm going to do something kind of crazy with my life, like this is the time to do it. Um, so I decided to join the Peace Corps and uh, move to South Africa to serve in the schools there. I actually have a Vuvuzela in my office. The Vuvuzela is the, the device, for those who are listening, it's the device that they use at football slash soccer matches that makes that really annoying buzz the whole game. Yes, that's exactly it. Uh, so this is one of my many uh, keepsakes from my time in South Africa. It's gone school to school with me because it's always fun to be able to have something that uh, gets people's attention at school. Um, but really like loved my time in South Africa because I got to really like live with folks in their communities, work in the schools, um, and being able to try to just support their educational development while also just supporting myself and being able to, you know, extend my horizons. And you learn so much about your own culture when you when you step outside of it and can reflect back on it. Um, so I have so many fond memories of that time in my life. And I'm just so thankful that I had the opportunity to go and do that. And I know that it has just informed my view of just being appreciative of all that we have in terms of education here in the United States. Some of the classrooms that I worked in were, you know, 60 or 70 students in a classroom. Um, wow. But seeing the power of education through their eyes um, and recognizing that that same power exists within our school system and, you know, seeing school as being a, an a opportunity creating avenue for so many kids um, just truly really re-inspired me. So coming back from the Peace Corps, um, went back and became a high school teacher and, and then decided to pursue school leadership, just seeing that as an opportunity to just, you know, extend my impact beyond the classroom to, to you know, kids across an entire school. Wow, really impressive. I just actually started reading. I love to read. I don't spend enough time doing it, but I just started reading uh, the biography on Elon Musk, which just mm. came out a week or two ago. Really interesting uh, individual, but he's, he grew up in South Africa, a uh, substantial amount of time in South Africa. So I did not know that. I'm only like 80 pages in, but and it is very thick. It's roughly a thousand pages. So a lot to, uh, long ways to go. But anyway, you said you taught high school. I don't, I didn't remember that. What did you teach? I taught uh, high school social studies. Yeah, so I taught uh, African American history, U.S. history, uh, and civics. Wow! And yeah. did you always teach secondary? No, so I taught middle school for a while too. So I taught okay. seventh and eighth grade. I did social studies. I did ELA as well. Went to the Peace Corps. When I came back, uh, started teaching high school. Got it. Okay. Well, let's move away from the professional experience into the more personal level. You mentioned your family moving to the suburbs, if you will. Um, so tell us a little bit about your family. I know you have some children and uh, what's going on at home. Yeah, so much going on at home. So between being a principal and being a dad, that's pretty much, you know, 100% of my time in life. Um, uh, my wife and I, uh, my wife's name is Desiree. We have three awesome kids. Um, my son, Theo, he is nine, just turned nine. He's in fourth grade. Uh, my daughter, Hazel, she's in second grade. She's seven. And my youngest, Franklin, he just started kindergarten. Um, so my kids really as kids do, take up all of my time outside of school um, from just, you know, being with them all the time. But, you know, they're all into sports and activities. So um, Theo does fall baseball right now. I'm assistant coaching with him. So I get to do that this evening and a couple of days a week. Um, my daughter Hazel does softball. So we're always running around for that. Um, Franklin does soccer. So, you know, every evening after I get home from school is just occupied with, you know, the rush of dinner, 
bath, homework, whatever activity we're doing, and bedtime. And I pretty much go to bed as soon as they do. Um, but definitely, you know, being a dad, I think is just like tremendously impacted my work as a principal, just, you know, seeing my kids reflected in all the kids at the school and just really making sure, helping teachers to make sure that, you know, like what's happening at our school would be as, as what we would want for our own children. Well, so people who don't work in the world of education, I just did this symbol, which is kind of like my pinky and my thumb pointing back and forth to my head. That's a brain match. And I can certainly relate to Mr. Minna's experience. It's if I'm not here at work in the evenings, I'm doing the the relay race of go home, eat dinner, get changed, get to an athletic field, get back, homework again, and wash up and get everybody to bed. And then I can finally take a deep breath and go to bed myself. So yep. and where are your cleats? Where, where yep. is the field that we're going to today? So just coordinating all that. Yeah, it's like a daily, you know, it's the second shift, we call it. First shift right. is at school, second shift at home. All right. So the folks who are not watching on YouTube or on Facebook uh, don't have the pleasure of seeing you and what you look like. But I have to ask a very serious question. Mm -hmm. Mr. Minna's head looks like a cue ball. So I have to ask, shaved or bald? A little bit of bald. Okay. So I think up here is probably bald. Okay. Shave that too much. Started seeing that going and decided to just shave the rest and just kept it going since then. Okay. So you don't have the, the nice horseshoe yet. No, I mean, I, if I let it grow out, who knows, but I think it's more just a little light spot back there. So Got as it. soon as I saw the inklings of the hair going, I just made a commitment. Plus, well, you know, I fight I, it. yeah, I let this grow. So it's like, I don't need it on top. I got this going for me. Yeah. He, Mr. Minna is showing a extensive beard. Uh, this thing is like James Harden level. Uh, very, very impressive, Mr. Minna. I appreciate it. Yeah, right. it's, my, it's my it's my crowning achievement. So why why we said while we said uh, James Harden type of beard, we won't get into the Sixers gossip and what's going to happen there. But I must ask, you're from Philadelphia. You worked in Philadelphia. Clearly love Philadelphia. And you said your youngest son's name, I believe, is Franklin. Was it inspired by the Sixers mascot Ben Franklin or neither? Uh, I think it's inspired by Philadelphia overall, probably more okay. Ben than anybody else. Um, yeah, we call him Frank or Frankie, though. So he kind of doesn't live up to the Franklin full name all the time unless he's in trouble. Okay, understood. Uh, I get the, the full Todd Michael when I'm in trouble. So he gets Franklin. I'd rather be Franklin. Okay, uh, let's, let's go aside from professional and uh, family life, but tell us a little bit about you. So what are your interests outside of, of course, things we've already discussed? Do you have any unique hobbies, talents, skills, uh, anything like that? Well, I might as well disclose it here because I did, uh, I got booed at back to school night. Uh, so that was interesting as a first. Oh, no, I don't hold on. Let's pause folks. I'm not sure I can maintain my composure because I think he's going down the sports fan route. Go ahead, Dan. Yes. You're on to something. And I just like to be transparent. Maybe, you know, I'm glad I didn't say this in the interview, but I'm going to say it now. Uh, so originally I'm from North Jersey and all my family is from North Jersey and New York, uh, grew up in the Poconos actually. So didn't grow up in Philadelphia, only moved here after college, um, but have been in this area for a long time. But because of my deep connections to North Jersey and New York, I am a Giants fan and a Yankees fan. And yes, luckily there's no in the moment feedback right now. Cause I'm sure I'd be hearing the booze. Um, but we can Bob hit that sound effect. <laughs> yeah. There we go. All right. Okay. Continue. I just feel like it's my duty uh, to at least be transparent about that. So, you know, there's, there's a couple of Giants fans at Walton Farm, some kids that I connected with instantly because of that. So, you know, I like to think that this is my way to, to connect with kids. It may not always feel represented in their sport team selections at school. So I was pulling for Daniel Jones at one point because the Giants were terrible. And um, my wife and I are big Duke fans because she went to Duke. Our daughter is named Cameron after Cameron Indoor Stadium. Our dog's name is Duke. There's actually Duke Roots in my son Brady's name as well. Um, but now last year, the Giants became a playoff team. So they don't stink anymore, although they might this year. And um, I can't cheer for them. So that's fair yeah. enough. I understand. Yeah. And luckily they they haven't been as competitive lately. So it hasn't been it hasn't been as tense as you know some years past have been between the Giants and Eagles fans. Um, but like I said, there's a there's a few in every school that I've been a part of, and you know, we connect instantly over that, just being in the minority there. 
All right. Give us one or two other things. So not only are you a New York slash New Jersey sports fan, what else do you have going on? Um, so I like to work out, um, and over the last couple of years started to train jujitsu, uh, oh. as often as I can. So I'm still looking for a new gym after having moved. Um, but that's been just a super fun hobby to be able to just do something that, you know, I think what's so hard about being a parent and being a, a principal is your brain is always running and thinking about all the things that you need to do, could be doing, should have done differently. Um, and there's not many things that really get you out of that, you know, internal dialogue headspace. Um, but working out and doing jujitsu definitely brings you very present and in the moment because you can only really focus on what's in front of you. So it's kind of like a forced meditative experience for me on top of just, you know, getting good exercise and learning something and doing something really fun. Um, so I'm really looking forward to get back into that. Um, but that's, yeah, that's a hobby that I have when I can find space in the schedule for it. That is really fun. Okay. Uh, definitely learned a few new things today. All right. So I know you have a school to run and it's the middle of the school day. So I don't want to take up too much of your time, but before you go, uh, you've been here now, you started, I think mid late August yep. and, um, you're, I guess over a month in at this point. So what have you found to be special or unique about North Penn? That's a really good question. And I think it's like anything else. Uh, what, any organization comes down to is the people. And I walked into a school at Walton Farm that just has some of the most caring, compassionate, put kids first people that, that I've had the pleasure to be around. Um, and people that know their stuff too, right? Not just that like care for kids, but like really know their work as educators and really are always thinking about how to make sure kids feel comfortable, safe, and, and joyful at school. So, you know, I think about uh, the first day of school, we had a, a big welcome back and the energy was really high. And I'll, I'll never forget our gym teacher, Mr. Irvin, you know, he is just a ball of energy on that first day. Um, and I was talking to another teacher. And I was like, man, man, what a good first day. The energy is so high. And they're like, no, it's like that every day with him and with everyone. And <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Can he keep that energy up? Can we? He can. He can, and it yes. is that every day, you know, whether it's, you know, playing rock, paper, scissor with the kids as they come in and blasting music just to really make kids smile and, and have joy. You know, I'm, I'm just so impressed by, from our facilities team, you know, Jimmy just makes this building shine and that just, you know, res, you know, communicates the respect that we have for, for the place that we are in um, to just like the joyful connections that our teachers have with parents, with uh, kids. So, you know, those deep relationships are awesome to see. So, you know, we have a new kindergarten teacher, Ms. Bedeau. Um, she was a teacher at Walton Farm. She was a student of some of the teachers at Walton Farm, and now she's a teacher at Walton Farm. And I think that is just awesome because I think it speaks to the way that this community really does have deep connections with each other um, and truly just want what's best for kids. So that's motivating for me. And I know we all feed off of that when, you know, there's some days when the weather's rough or you're not feeling great and it's, you know, it's a, it's a, it could be a tough day, but when you see uh, all the people around you super excited and keeping that energy up and, and then you see the response of students to just feel so positive and happy to come to school like that joy factor you can feel it and that you know it's just to me it just makes every day awesome to be to be here at Walton Farm and to be a part of North Penn well uh to all the listeners at home the dozens hopefully hundreds at some point of listeners at home you can see why we are excited to have Mr. Minna here as part of the North Penn School District community. Uh, Dan, I want to thank you so much for joining. Uh, thank you for being on the team, working so hard. And just, I always say when people say, what are you looking for in a new blank principal, custodian, school nutrition services, bus driver, whatever? The answer is always, I'm looking for somebody who makes us better. And uh, I think you make us better. So I'm glad to have you. Walton Farms, lucky to have you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. I really appreciate it. Thank you. You got it, Bob. Hit that outro music for Dan as he's fading off into the distance here, got probably going into the cafeteria to hang out with some kids. And let's, there goes Dan. Let's bring Bob back in. Bob, get in here. You know what that sound is, right? I'm surprised you didn't have him play the Vavuzela, right? Vavuzela. I was, I was hoping you'd get him play a tune there. He's got this. Vavuzela. I, I don't know how to say it. Oh, I know. Anyway. Vavuzela. 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 Okay. Anyway, that's what that <laughs> sounds like. I was hoping you'd have him play it. So it's awesome conversation there with Dan. He's a great guy. And uh, looking forward to talking to him throughout the year some more. So Yeah. I and, think uh, 
He certainly replaced uh, what some may call a legend here in North Penn and Mr. McCosco, a guy who was here his entire career over 34 years and beloved by that community, the Bridal Path community and so on. Um, so he you know, was principal of Walton Farm Bridal Path. Um, but Dan seems to be filling the shoes as best he can, and we're glad to have him. It's exciting. I All do right. love that you said he wasn't sure if uh, at the first day of school when he had uh, Fred Irvin out there bringing the energy on the first day of school and wasn't sure if he can maintain that. And that's, I'm sitting here going, oh, oh, he maintains. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have no idea. Yeah, so I failed. To, this is a bad job by me as an interviewer. I'm still getting used to this new gig. Do um, you think Fred is shaved or bald? Ooh. Well, you know what I think we need to do? He's got to come on. Got to have another guest. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll add him to the list over here. Fred yeah. Irvin is now on the Educating with Ease. And the topic is hair care. Got it. I think he may bring additional listeners just because Mr. Irvin is a popular guy. He is a force to be reckoned with. That's for sure. All right. So we had Stephanie Hannon. Then we had Dan Minna. I was calling him Mina for weeks and weeks. No one corrected me. It's Minna. Um, but let's let's go down a, a new path. Uh, we actually, and we did a Facebook Live episode from the road on a bus on Monday. Uh, we had our students and staff had off or, for Yom Kippur, uh, I believe the holiest days of uh, the Jewish faith. So I just want to hope that all of our Jewish families and community members had a wonderful Yom Kippur. Uh, that said, we were headed to Gettysburg to do a bit of a leadership team building activity. And you were along for the ride. We we brought the cabinet, the superintendent's cabinet, it's called, and kind of like our senior administrators, but also a few other integral folks who are involved in emergencies here in North Penn. Uh, yourself as someone who works in communications, Dennis Ryan, our coordinator of transportation, Mr. Roan, uh, coordinator of emergency services and safe schools. Um, who else joined us? Anybody else I'm missing outside of the three of you? It was just cabinet and then, uh, yeah, those three. Those three. Okay. Um, so that said, what'd you think, Bob? Tell the, tell the listeners a little I, bit about look, it. If you listen to me, you know, I like North Penn history, but I'm, I'm a, I like history in general and uh, particularly the Civil War. So just uh, anytime I get an opportunity to go there, it's, uh, it's always something I look forward to. Um, it's, it's really interesting when you get to that, to the battlefield there. But what I liked about what we did there wasn't just a tour of the battlefield. It was a leadership, um, exercise to, to look at decisions that were made and how communication engagement of your, of your group, um, and how you inspire the people around you to do what you need them to do. And of course, sometimes it, it feels like it's a battle right here in the school district, with certain things that we've got to we've got to figure out and move forward with, but uh, you know it's it's very sombering when when you when you realize and you're on that field where so many um, gave their life uh, for for this cause, and uh, so it was interesting to hear the battle strategy and all of us, and then for for us to to sit there and kind of apply that to our leadership uh, yeah. of what what types of um, decisions that are made and about how communication and miscommunication can affect literally affected the the um, the turn of our country in that moment on those battlefields, sure. those three days. So, you know, those kinds of, you know, one communication issue could have changed everything else that happened for either side uh, those three days in July. So I was, I was really uh, honored to, to be a part of it. And I thought it was very valuable for each of us to, to hear those stories and talk about the strategy and each of the, the battles that took place in the different areas of the battlefield throughout those three days. Um, and I don't know about you, if you guys had a chance to talk about it in cabinet or if things already reflecting back on your on your day there where it made sense of going you know this is kind of what we talked about on monday you know when we were there on the battlefield yeah so you you summarized it beautifully i had never been there it really wasn't a huge part of my upbringing outside of school to go visit historical sites or museums or anything like that i guess it's just not really an interest of my parents um, we were always involved in sports and uh, activities but i can't recall ever going to gettysburg mm -hmm. and it was very moving uh, aside from the leadership components and the communication lessons that were to be taken away from the experience, to stand in a field and hear our guide who was with us all day tell us, look, 6,000 people lost their lives here in 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Just very moving. And it, it really brings you back to reality and puts things into perspective. Like what we do every day, Bob, it's hard, right? It is hard uh, to care for, educate, and work with 13,000 kids and their families and 2,000 staff members. But it, it, it is 
rewarding. Uh, it can be so positive, fun, and it is so fulfilling. And when we get stressed and worked up and, and upset about certain things, something like that brings it back down to earth. And it's like, look, we can get through this. Um, this is not what folks dealt with. What, what year was that? 1863, I think. Is that correct? 18, July of 1863. Yep. July 1st through 3rd. I'm a good student. I remember. You got it. Good job. Look at, look at that. <laughs> um, but that was really, really powerful for me. Um, we went to the museum itself and we got to see a, a short movie. And then we went into this big panoramic. And the panoramic was uh, three stories tall, at least 360 degrees, of course. Um, and they gave a story and you walked around and observed this beautiful painting that was painted, I believe at the 50 year anniversary. Um, it was just, it was a lot. And I walked away and honestly, like spending time with folks, we work so hard and we're, we're in the trenches and trying to work through some of the things that you referenced and you don't just spend quality time together. Like it, it is good to pause and ride a bus and talk and get to know one another and, uh, take a deep breath. So Outside of the leadership and communication lessons that were learned um, and the perspective gaining, the team building was exciting too. So we have great people who work here. I appreciate so much the hard work and the commitment to our students and their families. Um, I loved it. Um, I actually ordered a book at your recommendation and the recommendation of our tour guide. I'm going to try to learn a little bit more about the Civil War and how close this country was from being very different from the United States of America that you and I know today. No, no, that's great. So the uh, the other thing, I, you know, the other big part of our team there, so we took a school bus, we drove a school bus, and I will tell you, I'm getting a little up there in age now. I'm not ancient, but I'm not younger. Um, I'm not used to sitting on a bus seat for a school bus that long, <laughs> back and forth. Um, but I really appreciated our coordinator of transportation, Dennis Ryan, who uh, drove for us. So he drove us down there, and it was raining all morning, we got to Gettysburg and it cleared up and was it was a cool day, but it was a nice day. It was. And we get back in the van and it starts raining again. And uh, he drove back another three hours in the rain. So super kudos to Dennis for just we're just the noisy kids in the back, you know, making noise. And and Dennis is focused on the road and keeping us safe. So we really appreciate him driving and um, and being there with us. So I was just thankful. I'm like, oh, thank God. Imagine if we're all just driving separately, you know, or whatever. Yeah. It was really nice to be together. And you know what? Enjoy one of our wonderful North Penn school buses. <laughs> yeah, it was not propane because no. it was such a far distance to travel, but it was a new bus. It was very nice. And I want to echo your sentiments towards Dennis. I mean, can you think of a better way to spend a rainy Monday than driving your 11 bosses? for two hours each way. Right. I mean, <laughs> that's what he was doing. Uh, so Dennis, thank you. You did a great job. We appreciate you and all that the transportation department does uh, and getting our kids to and from school. We're very fortunate. And I want to give a shout out here, Bob, to our facilities department. Uh, my goodness gracious, getting our schools ready for the start of the school year. It's the end of September now. And not only do they work really hard in polishing and stripping the floors and doing all these things to get the schools ready and clean for the start, but September, when everybody gets back, that's when you find out things are broken, things are missing, thing, like, you know, the things that happen over the summer, right? Moving furniture, moving, doing all these things. September's tough. And you always say, hey, it's no angry month. Um, <laughs> Can't be angry in the month of September, because if you're surprised that something crazy, a request came out that you didn't expect is coming, that's on you. Because that's September. Because everybody, you got 13,000 kids, you got almost, what, 3,500, 4,000 staff members of people who need things all at the same time, right? And, yeah. and our facility staff always, 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 regardless of what's going on, steps up and gets done what we need done. Uh, and it's things we didn't even think of, you know, first day of school, there was something we didn't think of. And by the afternoon, there's like 10 things that need to be done that we didn't think of. And uh, I echo your statement there. Our facility staff is amazing and they, they work really hard. Leadership under Tom Schneider and Bob Linetti and, uh, and uh, Dan Linsky, those guys do an awesome job leading all of our crew. And so really appreciate them as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, we've spent a lot of time the last few months, excuse me, talking about North Penn High School. Yeah. And the renovation. But we have 21 other facilities in the district, right? And they and still need work and they are still being fixed and we still have projects in every single one of those buildings as we move forward. Yeah, yeah. New roofs in, in two of our buildings and all kinds of chillers here and 
uh, boilers there and all kinds of electrical work and exterior work. And it's still, we're, we're still moving along and they're still working really hard. So for the women and men who work in our facilities department, just thank you. Thanks for all your hard work. Um, yes, we've been talking a lot about the high school project because it, it really will set the path for this school district for the next 50 years. Um, but all of our schools are equally as important and um, need the attention of those experts. So thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, Bob. Um, so the last thing I want to do before we close here, we were saying we try to keep these episodes to 30 to 40 minutes. I think we're right up against that at this point. Yep. Um, I just uh, want some feedback from the listener. You know, shoot us an email, put it like you said in Spotify, Facebook. Just go go to the Spotify page um, and click on it. You can leave a voicemail message even for us. Really? So, yeah. So I don't know how it works until we get a voicemail. So I want to get one of those <laughs> and we can listen. And then uh, maybe we mash a little something together for you if you guys leave some Ooh. voicemails for us. So this is kind of like taking calls. Yes. Um, Oh, I, I like this. So at the end, if you want to give, so last time we talked about, maybe it was on Facebook Live, we talked about some shout outs. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can have listeners leave voicemails on Spotify. You can or can't identify yourself. That's fine. But give a shout out to someone in the school district that does a great job, that works really hard, that you're appreciative for, and we can play them at the end and the close out of the episodes. But I've always wanted to do this. Since you're playing this live on 1440 and 98.5 yes. WNPV, can we pause for station identification? Absolutely. Here WNPV. We go. WNPV. 98.5 FM. 1440 AM. Lansdale. Lansdale. All right. I loved it. That was great. Uh, <laughs> that, my wildest dreams just came true there. My wife says she's always wanted to work a cash register. Like that was a dream of hers as a child. I've always wanted to pause for station identification. There we go. So. You got to do that in more meetings. Top of the hour, just hit 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 the station ID. This is Todd Bauer in your meeting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bob. Uh, thanks so much for your time. Special thank you to Dan Minna and our friends at Walton Farm. We will also take suggestions on more guests. So we had Stephanie Hannon, Dan Minna. I have a list over here kind of running as we're going to try to do this every two weeks. Uh, but keep listening, keep subscribing, keep liking, keep commenting. Um, and we appreciate your engagement. We appreciate all that you do. Dan, or Bob, sorry, Dan Minna. Bob, hit that outro music. We'll see you next time on Educating with Ease. So long, folks.